Hey gang, RoboCop vs. Terminator by Frank Miller and Walter Simonson. That's my pick for a cheap, easily attainable comic series for Captain Strange Life's it, it, not a contest. A non-test. Yes, this debuted in 1992 when the comic book speculation glut was in full gear. When crossovers, preferably with the term verses in the title, were instant hits. So this was heavily ordered by stores. I don't know how many fans actually bought them because I got mine from the 50 cent bin. And there are plenty of copies on eBay. Uh, some people are selling sets for 30. And one guy can't sell his at a buck 50 a piece. But how could they think this wouldn't sell? Dark Horse already had a major success with Aliens vs. Predator. Frank Miller was a critical and fan darling, and he was already working with Dark Horse on Sin City and Give Me Liberty, and he'd written scripts for the movies Robocop 2 and 3, so this project was sure to hit. To not cross over these cybernetic properties was leaving cash on the table. It was also a great way for Dark Horse to get rid of the stink Marvel left on the Robocop license. You know, Robocop ran at Marvel for 23 issues. It wasn't a massive failure. It ended at, I think, the end of 1991. But if Marvel, the biggest comic book company in a booming marketplace couldn't make RoboCop work, what chance does Dark Horse have unless they start off RoboCop with a bitch and sure to sell crossover? In fact, I don't think they had a RoboCop series till 1993. He's, his next appearance was in a story in Dark Horse Comics, a color anthology with licensed properties and also with properties that Dark Horse wanted to license, so like Time Cop first appeared there. And RoboCop vs. Terminator actually did end up getting licensed. They made these RoboCop vs. Terminator video games. The Sega Genesis version had plenty of gore, which is why I loved it so. A friend of mine had the much less violent Super Nintendo version, and whenever he played it, I'd be like, this stinks, where's the spurting blood? I don't know how much input Dark Horse had in these, but uh, they are mentioned on the back. Based on the Frank Miller, Walter Simonson million selling Dark Horse comic series, and we all know where those millions of comics went, right into the hands of fans like me via the 50 cent bin. But again, who wouldn't want to buy multiple copies of this? You need to put one away to keep Minty fresh, you need to put another one away to keep Minty, because it's sure to be worth cash money. And you needed one more to cut out the mini standees. Each issue had little inserted standees of the characters. Certainly not the worst cash gouging gimmick of the 90s. That title goes to the Purple Jewel on Eclipso number one that damaged the back of any comic and a stack above it. And as for the story, it's pretty good. In terms of Frank Miller's work, it maybe reads more like Spawn Batman than Batman Year One. And if you haven't read Spawn Batman, that's the comic that changed Frank Miller's doing a Batman book into Frank Miller's doing a Batman book. Still, RoboCop vs. Terminator is hyperactive, highly structured fun, if you're into that kind of thing. So thank you to Captain Strangelife. Thank you for this non-test. I'll have your link in the description and at the end of the video. And what do you think was the stupidest gimmick of the 90s? Was it hollow foil eyesores? Was it creator's ashes in the printer's ink? Leave your thoughts in a comment down below. 90s!